located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray, Pennsylvania. For more information or to make an appointment, call 724-942-3002. That's 724-942-3002. For Dennis J. Courtney, M.D. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to AIM Impact on Your Health. AIM Impact on Your Health, where every day our goal is to have you learn at least one thing that will help you live better and longer. AIM Impact on Your Health, heard every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney, and I'm with you each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9. AIM Impact on Your Health, where each day you'll find current medical news, knowledgeable guests, fascinating health topics, and, of course, where we do encourage you to call in to join in. Today, hey, special guest today, Rob, just really uh, was able to bring him to us as of yesterday. Uh, last week he was in Pittsburgh. Of course, I'm talking about the guest, the featured speaker up there at the Freedom of Choice and Cancer Therapy Group. Uh, it was all out of sequence there last week. It, it wasn't a third Thursday. It was a Wednesday. It wasn't at 7.30. It was at 7. Meanwhile, the gentleman uh, who spoke there last week was one I just couldn't bring to you ahead of time because there was a conflict. He was traveling to Pittsburgh. He couldn't come on board. I'm talking about, uh, I mean, an icon. I consider uh, some of the guests we bring here have attained that status. I'm talking about Dr. Thomas Levy, MD. Uh, guest in Pittsburgh last week, guest today on the radio. If you were able to go up there last week, I uh, hope you'll find our discussion today equally enriching. And if you were unable to, uh, you will really enjoy our discussion with Dr. Thomas Levy today. Uh, we'll be right with him right after that first commercial break, that first uh, segment, and moving to the second segment and beyond. As we normally do around here, if in the course of our discussion with Dr. Levy, you want to call in to ask a question or make a comment, the number, of course, as always, will be 412-825-6262. That's 412-825-6262, Dr. Thomas Levy, our special guest today. Now, uh, looking on the calendar, and we have uh, started to fill some other things up here with respect to our April schedule. Um, on, on Friday, we'll open them up. We'll have a chance to talk to you uh, about what's on your mind. On Monday, uh, we have a guest scheduled. His uh, name is Rick Hill. Going to have an interesting story, I'm sure, just by reading some of the the uh, uh, initial uh, press clippings that were sent to me, and usually always are. Um, the discussion is going to be uh, one of uh, could the air inside your house be killing you? But this gentleman uh, brings with him an extra additional dimension. Evidently, he was diagnosed with uh, terminal cancer, and uh, here we are, many years later. He uh, it really wants to talk about that, and it is tied into this uh, environmental contamination issue. You don't want to miss our Monday show with Rick Hill. Also, too, I hope you enjoyed. Now, on Good Friday, we didn't do a live show. And on Monday, we weren't live either. I know uh, how that gets. Uh, but uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, our repeat shows on Friday with uh, Dr. Eric Shapira, uh, the gerontologist we had uh, with us a couple times last month. Uh, I mentioned him again because um, although we've just recently turned the page into April, as we get into May, Dr. Shapiro will be coming back. He was uh, really roundly received by you, this topic on issues of how to age gracefully and the issues that come along with not only your aging but the aging of your parents and grandparents and the like and those issues that really need to be addressed and sometimes really aren't catching everybody by surprise. I thought it was a wonderful contribution to be made to our show. Also in his book entitled A New Wrinkle, What I Learned from Older People Who Never Acted Their Age. Dr. Eric Shapiro is going to be back with us in May. Uh, we inked that one yesterday, too. In fact, I can give you the exact date, May 5th. So way into the future, we'll bring him back to you. Also, too, hope you enjoyed the uh, repeat show. I thought that you really responded when we were talking about clock busting uh, last week. And I replayed that show immediately for you on Monday, not having done a live, but right after Easter. So um, there, there are questions that service about this, the cardiovascular issue. And uh, it was the first time, I think, that I can recall ever having a show 
devoted completely to the issue of clot busting, what mild clot busters there are available, uh, how you can do that. There are no prescription mild clot busters, but there are certainly plenty of natural products that will do these this job, and it must and it really must be done. So I hope you enjoyed that repeat show, uh, and we'll be filling up our schedule as time marches on. Uh, I want to bring your attention, of course, uh, our Fruit of the Spirit connection. We um, continue to support and are supported by uh, Fruit of the Spirit. Uh, it's a remarkable little elixir that you can take uh, once a day, one ounce. One ounce the equivalent of five servings of fruits and vegetables in terms of uh, nutrition. But, of course, it com is comprised of 14 biblical fruit parades. Uh, throw in, just for some good measure, uh, alkaline minerals from the Dead Sea, a couple of herbs, namely a couple of odd ones, frankincense and myrrh, and then to resveratrol. Put those all together and a great taste of drink. You've got fruit of the spirit. If you're interested, you can either stop in, get a free swig, if you know what I mean from us. We have always have a couple of bottles we uh, open up and have on hand if you want to taste this stuff. If you go, you know what, I trust you, I just want to order it, do it one or two ways, 1-800-442-3793 to call up to order it, uh, and it's at a reduced price, too, 29 bucks a bottle. Uh, when we first started, as you would well know by now, it was $10 higher than that. Uh, for those that are techie inclined, want to do it online, fruitspirit.net. I say fruitspirit.net is a way to handle that. Uh, working with uh, trying to get someone from the company at Ciara um, to come on board. This is this unique little company with these uh, transparent holographic chips that um, uh, if you've been in any of my speaking engagements, you may have been chipped. I'm the chipper. You're the chippy. Uh, you may have been chipped for various reasons. And usually there was only three that we could deal with. They were the issue of pain problems sleep issues, and energy. Now, there's two more added to the realm since they launched this product about three weeks ago in Houston. Uh, we were way uh, ahead of launch. We were in the pre-launch realm when I first brought it to the Pittsburgh area. Uh, you'll be seeing it creep up over and over throughout the area, I'm sure, but now one for EMF, which is um, electromagnetic field disturbances, and then finally, one for the athlete. And actually, there are, there are two different chips that come in that packet. Uh, for the the bothers and the uh, the repercussions of those who are engaged in athletic activity uh, into their uh, well, you could be young, but middle age, and we actually have a new definition for what is considered senior and old age, whatever age group. Uh, uh, the issues associated with working out sometimes are problematic. So, but looks to be about it. Look, I really. Uh, I'm interested in getting to our guest today because he is, you know, if you don't know about Thomas Levy, I think you'll see in at least the initial uh, few minutes that we are dealing with an icon. I want to bring that icon on board with us. And so we're going to take a short break. And in the interim, we're going to find him. He's thinking Mississippi this morning, close to a landline right now. Dr. Thomas Levy talking about well a whole bunch of things, but one of his uh, endeavors that he's most involved with now is liposomal vitamin C, and glutathione. That was a new one. New one on me. Be back in a moment. This is Dennis J. Courtney, MD. Have you become confused about how best to manage your health? It's no wonder. It seems that every time you turn on the television or radio, another expert has yet another suggestion for you to follow that seems to be reasonable enough, but no matter how dutifully you follow the instruction, it just doesn't quite produce the results that you are looking for. If this confusion sounds familiar to you, give us a call at the Center for Complementary Health, where we'll make some sense of the confusion based on a blending of traditional and alternative medicine that we've been perfecting over the last seven years. We offer metabolic nutrition testing, immune system repair, natural hormone replacement therapy, chelation therapy, 
cutting-edge allergy correction and a host of other safe and effective alternative therapies. Dennis J. Courtney, M.D., is located at 3075 Washington Road in McMurray. Phone 724-942-3002. Want to help your family eat healthier? Instead of learning to disguise tofu in wondrous ways, how about some real nutritional power? If your family has the typical American palate for fried pizza and burgers, giving your family the blessing of good nutrition is a struggle. Food of the Spirit is the answer for your family's nutritional needs. Food of the Spirit is an all-natural, whole food puree made from fresh fruits native to the Holy Land with alkalizing minerals. Food of the Spirit was five years in the formulation, the work of a team of top nutritional experts with independent science to confirm its antioxidant power. One ounce a day provides the equivalent of five servings of fruits and minerals. Food of the Spirit is convenient, affordable, and delicious. Even your picky family will sing the praises of Food of the Spirit. Give your loved ones the blessing of good nutrition. Call 1-800-442-3793 for a special promotional offer. Food of the Spirit, a blessing for your good health. That's one 800 442-3793. Call them now. 1-800-442-3793. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard here on KHB 620 each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. I'm Dr. Dennis Courtney with you today on this uh, Wednesday version of the show. And uh, as I mentioned, special guest today. Now, folks, we do a lot of interviews. Uh, I do a lot of them. I enjoy bringing them to me. And uh, I'm interested by every single person I ever do bring to you. Occasionally, however, there are a few guests that we get that have reached and attained iconic status. I consider this gentleman to be one of the great icons of, of uh, medicine, and uh, you'll see what I mean. If you have never heard of him before, this is a little bit of this biography. I'm going to sort of set the stage for you. Uh, talking about Dr. Thomas Levy, uh, received his Bachelor of Arts degree in biology from Johns Hopkins. That was back in 1972. Later graduated from Tulane School of Medicine in 76. Continued training at Tulane, specialized in internal medicine, cardiology, board certified in both. Uh, after completing his postgraduate training, he served as an assistant professor of medicine at Tulane. Throw in there, at some point, a law degree. He got a JD besides folks. And then he moves off and he becomes a great author and uh, scientific investigator. Uh, leaves our country. We'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, works out of the country. Comes back occasionally. We have a gentleman today. Listen to these books, by the way. Uh, he's authored six of them. Uninformed Consent with uh, the great Hal Huggins. Roots of Disease with another one you know, Dr. Robert Kulotz. The list continues to go on and on and on. He's an icon, folks, and you've got him here today. Let's say good morning and welcome to Dr. Thomas Levy. Hello, Dr. Levy. Good morning, Dr. Courtney. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Welcome aboard. I got a little chills going that way up. Uh, Chris Matthews says, a chill going up my leg. Maybe not that way, but nonetheless, <laughs> nonetheless, um, I, I do not shudder from the, the comments I made about uh, those few that we do uh, have a chance to talk to occasionally and reach iconic status. Let's bring those uninformed, and we always like to inform everybody and make them informed folks that may be listening to you for the first time. Let's talk about Thomas Levy, such a such a, a, a stellar background. Bring our listeners up to date on how you arrive at the point you are today. You put the details in, uh, bring us up and allow us to talk about what you're most interested in today. We'll be talking about liposomal things, but uh, you've got what a career in the past. Tell us about it. Well, I suppose... No, I don't suppose. I know for sure that the transition point, if you will, came when I met Dr. Hal Huggins back in 1994. I was, at the time, just practicing a mainstream cardiology, and I met Dr. Huggins. He was in Colorado Springs, and after having a few chats, he invited me to come out to his clinic uh, at the time that he had, and he had a clinic in which they did what's called a total dental revision, where they cleaned out uh, root canals and other infected teeth in a wide variety of patients. And I was really quite flabbergasted at what I saw, especially how quickly he got results. I saw critically ill patients doing 
so much better immediately after many hours of tedious and uh, onerous dental work. And I said, how could such a result happen so quickly? I know getting rid of toxins must help, but this is just too fast to imagine. And Dr. Huggins just pointed to the IV bag that was hanging on each one of these patients. And lo and behold, uh, I realized each patient was getting 35 to 50 grams of vitamin C intravenously before, during, and after their dental work. And at least my own light went off, and I realized <laughs> there's something pretty special about this vitamin C to be having this type of effect, an effect I'd never seen before in my life, and quite honestly, I wouldn't have believed possible. So it was from that point on, being a consultant at Dr. Huggins Clinic for a while, and then beginning my own research that I came to realize not only how important vitamin C is, but how important uh, all antioxidants are and how important a very strong supply of electrons is uh, to your body's general health. Now that, uh, of course, uh, knowing how myself, I can understand uh, what an effect. I mean, the gentleman he just exudes all sorts. There's magnetism that comes off of that man, and I'm sure uh, you uh, were uh, equally as uh, initially affected as anyone would be. But having seen what I also saw, because we had Dr. Huggins here, and we did the dental revisions here, and uh, I think I can support and attest to the fact that within, uh, certainly if not hours, within a day or two of these people being extremely sick, things changed around. I've never heard you mentioned, however, that you were uh, really looking at that bag of uh, uh, infused vitamin C, and that must have been so uh, luring and intriguing to you that you really did take that to another level. Where, where did you take it to? What did you do with it? Well, I just started <clears throat> reading everything I could find about vitamin C. I eventually, after coming across Dr. Klenner's work and seeing what he'd done in so many conditions, eventually started using it in my own practice for a wide variety of conditions. And at least to my satisfaction, I was able to verify that the experiences of Dr. Klenner were certainly real and well reported, at least in the handful of diseases that I was able to treat that Dr. Klenner treated. So I then went further into the literature and using Dr. Irwin Stone's book as a cue, uh, I went not only back into the <clears throat> uh, recent medical literature, but started finding there was an enormous amount of literature in the 40s, 50s, 60s and early 70s, which certainly did not seem to me to have been well realized or appreciated up to that point in time. Now, vitamin C, of course, uh, to we medical doctors, although we're, we're aware of vitamin C, but certainly seeing it being infused at 50 grams and 75 grams uh, is something way afar stream of whatever we've had grown accustomed to and seeing in our medical in our in our medical upbringing, um, so uh, the fact that vitamin C was being given IV, I think, may have been a little bit uh, disconcerting to a medical doctor. And in that dose, uh, how did you reconcile that? I mean, that, that's that's the first hurdle I think that uh, most doctors have to have to jump over uh, with uh, the administration of vitamin C. Well, it was really. <clears throat> the experiences of Dr. Klenner that he reported in roughly 20 different papers that allowed me to overcome that hurdle. I, You know, whenever you come across what you consider to be a phenomenal uh, finding in the literature, uh, you have a certain point in time where you either have to say this person is the biggest exaggerator or downright liar in the world or there's something here that's not been given sufficient attention and hasn't really been brought to the light of day. And when I saw all the things that Dr. Klenner had done over and over and over again, I decided uh, I should try it myself. And that's what I did. I, I even took the opportunity one point in time. Uh, some people might think it's crazy, and maybe it was, but Dr. Klenner had uh, reported in one of his cases where one of his patients was literally dying in front of him that had had a brown recluse spider bite that he took out a butterfly needle and a syringe full of vitamin C 
uh, fairly undiluted at that time, and in his Klenner's own words, gave this multigram dose of vitamin C as rapidly as a 20-gauge needle would allow. And I said, wow, that's really interesting. And I, after thinking about it a while, I took up three or four grams of vitamin C and started a butterfly on myself and, and proved to myself that that was feasible as well. And I went ahead and did that. And this precipitated a lot of different uh, research angles, but certainly it rapidly dispelled the concept that there was any possibility of any danger Harm. of giving multigram, yeah. 30, 40, 50 gram infusions. And, you know, there's not. Uh, it's, it's interesting in the past, I heard one doctor say, wow, you're going to kill somebody if you give them 50 grams of vitamin C. Well, maybe that was his gut sensation, but nothing could be further from the truth. It's really one of the best things you can possibly do, not only to deal with disease, but to uh, maintain good health. So, yeah, that's just the research from there. Uh, at some point, um, after being made completely comfortable with vitamin C and uh, from examining the papers that you examined, Dr. Did you say Clemmer? Clemmer? I, I don't. Dr. Uh, Frederick Clemmer. K L E N N E R. Okay. Yes. Um, and most of this work, I'm sure that you had read about, was from an IV form of vitamin C. But at some point, and we'll probably have to get into talking about water soluble, fat soluble. This, this issue of uh, of, uh, of IV administered vitamin C, uh, you begin to look at this particular component of vitamin C because it's a little bit of a limitation, isn't it? I mean, you have to go to, to go to a doctor's office, get an IV started, and uh, give these uh, massive amounts through the vein, um, and probably because it, uh, that uh, just water-soluble vitamin C is so poorly absorbed. Discuss that for a moment, because at that that's the point where I see that you really made the contrib a, a large contribution uh, to what even our listeners right now can benefit from. Well, yeah, it is interesting. Uh, certainly... Straight-up straight ordinary vitamin C, ascorbic acid, or sodium ascorbate. Uh, when you take a very tiny dose, um, say 100 milligrams, it's very well absorbed. But when you start taking a multigram dose, uh, you can absorb as little as 10 to 15 percent. And in fact, those people who are familiar with taking vitamin C powders orally uh, know that for the most part, if they take 4 to 8 to 12 grams, much of it is unabsorbed and causes what's called a sea flush as it gets down to the distal colon, pulls in a lot of water, and causes a loose diarrhea. That, of course, is a good effect if you want to clean your gut, but it's not a desirable effect if you're just wanting to supplement and go about uh, a normal day's activities. So I really... I didn't really come upon the liposomal vitamin C. They came upon me. Uh, they looked in the Internet and saw that I was involved in vitamin C and and talked to me on the phone, offered to send me some. I said, oh, sure, fine, send me some. And I will be quite honest at the time, and this was probably close to six years ago now, uh, I had no idea <clears throat> what liposomes were, what a liposome delivery system was, any of that. Not 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 a clue. And it just so happened, serendipity, as they say, or chance, whatever you want to say, at the time, uh, I received their lipospheric C. It was in a box. I just let it sit on the floor against the wall. And at about that time, I had closed my own clinic in, uh, in Denver. And so I no longer had personal access to my precious intravenous vitamin C. And sure enough, a couple months down the road, I, in the middle of winter, I started getting a harsh cold and got pretty sick. And I immediately took my vitamin C powder to bile tolerance. And, of course, I no longer had access to the intravenous vitamin C. And so I was already at bile tolerance, having loose diarrhea, still feeling sick, and unable to take any more vitamin C because I'd reached my bile tolerance and I didn't have access to the intravenous. And so I looked over in the corner, and there's this liposomal C, which was promoted to be very easy on the stomach, never caused diarrhea, never caused gastric upset. So I said, well, let me take some of that as well. 
And after taking a few packets, I got so much better, so much rapidly, and so much more rapidly than I ever had before, uh, it almost made me think the thing that so many skeptical doctors think about anything, which is, well, I guess I wasn't that sick after all. <laughs> and it really wasn't until this episode or scenario repeated itself one or two more times with me, family, and friends that I was finally forced to face something that to me seemed to be inconceivable. And what had seemed to be inconceivable was a handful of these liposome encapsulated vitamin C packets, a gram in each packet, a handful, four to five to six, appeared to have substantially more and better clinical impact on an infectious disease than as much as 50 grams of intravenous vitamin C. And I just denied, 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 and after it happened enough times, I said, well, you know, idiot, it's about time you <laughs> learn what these liposomes are and try to reconcile what is a clear clinical observation that you're avoiding making. And it's at that point in time that I researched the liposomes, added a chapter on liposomes to my book, and realized that the liposome delivery, even though it takes place orally, keeps the vitamin C encapsulated, much of it, until it actually gets inside the cell. So you actually get with the oral liposome an effective intracellular delivery that you don't get as effectively even when it's given intravenously but unencapsulated in the liposomes. So at last I was able to make some scientific sense out of what I was repeatedly seeing, and that is that the liposomal vitamin C Although the intravenous vitamin C is fantastic, the liposomal vitamin C for most things in my clinical evaluation is more potent and more effectively than the IV. I would hasten to add that if you're severely ill and you have access to both forms, by all means take both forms. But the liposomes now give an accessibility of a very potent vitamin C antioxidant treatment uh, to large numbers of people that previously might have only had to, uh, would have had to look for a doctor to get an IV. So then, uh, as I'm listening to you now and uh, uh, sort of trying to reconcile this in my own mind, one hurdle, the big hurdle, uh, that, uh, that the IV versus oral, uh, when we're talking about regular vitamin C, was to try to get the vitamin C past the mucosal barrier into the bloodstream. And so water-soluble versus fat-soluble, um, I could easily see where uh, you, you should be able to improve that if you move away from the water-soluble form. Of course, there's another barrier, too, which is the cell membrane. And that must be where the liposomal activity is uh, guided over top of the IV because uh, that's another barrier that has to be transcended in order to have the vitamin C do its real work, which is intracellular and not extracellular, is that right? No question. That's, that's spot on. What, what you have is a situation where the vitamin C and the liposomes is encapsulated in something that's 100 to 200 microns large, or small, I should say, which is small enough that until the vitamin C is taken out of the liposome, the liposome can easily penetrate not only the uh, intestinal cells and pass through them, but it can easily pass through not only the pores in the cell wall, but it can fuse with the cell wall because it's made of the same type of substance as the cell wall. So you actually have an ability for unattenuated, unmetabolized vitamin C to get delivered directly inside the cell. But even more importantly is that the liposomes allow you to get this intracellular delivery in a fashion that does not consume energy. Even when you give vitamin C intravenously, but it's not encapsulated in liposomes, you need to use active transport mechanisms which consume energy because they go against the concentration gradient to get the vitamin C inside the cell. 
and this is the old classical scenario that we talk about of robbing Peter to pay Paul. You, you need to use energy to get energy inside the cell. So with the liposomes, you don't use that energy. You just get a direct delivery inside the cell, and you don't uh, push forward and then fall back, if you will. So this is why I believe uh, that the liposomes have proved to be so much more potent clinically than the, than the intravenous. Powerful uh, appreciation and understanding that uh, has clinical benefits that, uh, especially as you say, if you needed to combine the two therapies, you could. But outside of that, if you um, wanted to take and get the benefit of vitamin C as a, as a person who's just listening to us today, you can do so because you can purchase these items, and they're not prescription items. And they kind of, In fact, the product that you helped endorse, manufacture, and at least lay claim to having a handle on today is something called Lipo-C. Talk to us about Lipo-C. Talk to us about the product. Well, the, the product is a very well-formulated version of just what I said. A liposome is a microscopic round ball of lipid, something called phosphatidylcholine. And in fact, this process was discovered back in the 1960s when they dropped phospholipids inside water. It was just like dropping oil in water. The phospholipids would immediately ball up to try to avoid the water because they're fat-soluble, not water-soluble. But in the process that they would ball up, they would then automatically encapsulate whatever was dissolved inside the water. And taking this basic mechanism and applying some simple engineering techniques, they were then able to devise these microscopic balls of phospholipid, phosphatidylcholine, encapsulating vitamin C and just about everything else under the sun. What was impressive as the technology evolved is that they've developed liposomes, for example, that will deliver such huge, long molecules like insulin into the bloodstream by taking it orally, which is virtually unheard of. But because the liposome protects what it encapsulates from degradation and gets it inside the body intact, they were able to observe so far in animals that they can get hypoglycemic effects when they give liposome encapsulated insulin. So this technology evolved. And really only, I would say, in the past mm, past 10 years or so, no more, are these products actually going from the research labs uh, into uh, availability uh, and into usage uh, by doctors uh, and over-the-counter. It's also been researched a lot and is beginning to be used a lot in cancer chemotherapy, in which case they're able to take many of the highly toxic chemotherapy drugs, encapsulate them, have no stomach toxicity, have no breakdown in the stomach, and are able to deliver their chemotherapy directly inside the cell at a much lower dose with much less toxicity. So while I'm not endorsing chemotherapy in general, uh, a lipospheric encapsulated delivery form for chemotherapy is proving to be a very efficient therapeutic tool as well. So that's how things have evolved, and now with the advent of the vitamin C, lipospheric encapsulated, uh, as well as the glutathione, we're just seeing some phenomenal tools that are really available to anybody who wants them. The um, Is there any equivalency that you can make? I'm, I understand that you might not be able to, but you know, a certain number of milligrams of regular uh, oral vitamin C um, has to have uh, some mode of comparison to the liposomal form. In other words, um, if you take liposomal vitamin C, uh, 300 milligrams of vitamin C really would have the effect of how many milligrams of other forms of vitamin C, like would it be 2,000 milligrams? Is there any comparison at all? Or don't you worry about those comparisons? Well, you, you know, I would, have to, I would have to answer that question in two parts. The first is I really don't think you can take any amount of regular oral vitamin C that would give you the clinical impact over a short period of time as 
several grams of the lipospheric uh, because of a lot of different problems, not the least of which is you can take the regular aura all day long and you're not going to get the facilitated delivery inside the cell. Having said that, for practical purposes, uh, I would be willing to say that the lipospheric vitamin C, gram for gram, uh, is uh, anywhere from 10 to 20-fold more potent at least uh, there's than, the factor. Okay. Than, the, than the regular oral forms of vitamin C. And quite a difference in its capability eventually to get in the cell. So there's two hurdles, getting through the mucosal barrier and then the biggie, getting it right into the cell itself, uh, liposomal may, may, may have it, and it appears have head over heels advantages over any other form, including the, uh, vi the IV vitamin C, because although you may be able to quickly hurdle the, the gastric component, the, 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 the intestinal mucosal component, that second barrier turns out to be the major barrier to get the effect. Yes, no, that's, that's absolutely correct. You, you've got it. By Job, I think I do have it. <laughs> now, look, um, uh, a couple more words about this vitamin C. Then I, we got to get on because you, you've been working down in the, there in Columbia. By the way, I want to ask you a little bit about that too, okay? But you, you've been a busy guy, uh, and I think I guess you've taken the liposomal uh, concept and seen that what you can glom onto it, and uh, you've come up with some really interesting things that are now possible that weren't even conceptualized, at least I had never heard of it before, but uh, the, the, the Lipo C is uh, out and about and been available for quite some time. How do patients, how do people listening to us right now get a hold of that product? Well, the best way is to uh, go online. Their website is uh, liveonlabs.com. There's no E in that, L-I-V-O-N-L-A-B-S.com. And they also have not only some nice explanations that even perhaps give a little more detail about liposomes and what they do than I just talked about, but uh, they have not only all the ordering information, they also have a, a list of distributors throughout the country. So in the event that uh, you wanted to check, you might have some place or some company or something near you uh, that deals in this product as well. But it's it's fairly straightforward. It's easy to get a hold of. Liveonlabs.com, and that's with no E on the live part. Right. Okay? Yes. Gotcha. And I've written it down, and I'll have it there for my own uh, information as well as be able to pass on to others. Now, um, I mentioned, let's get that Columbia thing out of the way because it, it's very intriguing. You are an American who made a decision a while back uh to not live here in the United States anymore. You live in the country, not the, not the town, the country of Columbia. Uh, and so maybe just I'm taking a little bit of a break, why did that come about? Why is that still a fact? You still do live there, do you? Uh, no, I'm actually getting to the point where I'm uh, going to uh, move with my wife and child back to the States. But ah. I was in Columbia for a long time. And it's a, it's a delightful country. It's beautiful climate, beautiful geography. Uh, I will say, uh, and this factored into my decision, especially when I had more than just myself to worry about, uh, it probably does have a bit more violence uh, than, than I was willing to accept as a, as a random force in my life on a daily basis. And, and that's what ultimately has brought me back. But uh, it's been a delightful experience. Uh, I've had the opportunity to uh, treat some diseases I would never have treated uh, uh, when I was down there. I uh, certainly had uh, one uh, young gal, 14 or 15, that had hemorrhagic dengue fever. And about eight or nine packets of the lipospheric vitamin C completely cured that in 36 hours. It was very dramatic. So I was able to see that there are many applications for these products, uh, and gosh, uh, the extended family members, they, they go crazy when they think they're running out of these products because they realize how quickly they, uh, they get over problems. Well, well I'm, I'm glad. by the way, what I thought was our loss is now our gain. I'm, for whatever reason, I'm happy to hear you're back, okay, or you're coming back, and 
and uh, maybe we'll get to see Dr. Thomas Levy a lot more now that you will be state-bound. And, uh, and uh, where, where are you going to take up residence? You going back to Colorado? Uh, no, I'll, I'll be in Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi? Mississippi. Interesting. My, my hometown in Mississippi. Interesting. Well, let's do this, Dr. Levy. I'm giving you a bit of a break and giving uh, all of our listeners a chance to go uh, wet their whistles with whatever they'd like. Let's take a short break here right now. When we come back, let's move into, uh, I think, topic number two, but certainly piggyback right onto the concept of liposomal C. Let's talk about an intriguing discussion of what you've now done with something we all know about called glutathione. Okay, Doc? All right, sounds good. Okay, there you have it. You are with an icon, folks, Dr. Thomas Levy, uh, talking about liposomal delivery systems. The, the, the C, uh, boy, he conquered that quite a while back. He's conquered another one. you got to hear about it. Be back in a moment. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back once again to AM Impact on Your Health. Heard each and every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 8 to 9 o'clock. With you today on a Wednesday version of the show and uh, with an iconic figure, certainly uh, in medicine, that uh, that is bringing messages to you that uh, really you'll hear nowhere else. This uh, issue of the liposomal delivery system that we're talking, had talked about when we had Dr. Levy on our show before. Um, brought him to Pittsburgh before, actually, with the use of vitamin C. Uh, now it appears that Dr. Levy is moving on to other elements. You still with us, Dr. Levy? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, talk to us if you would, and and maybe I mean there's quite a future here because uh, this liposomal delivery system, as I'm now pondering, may find that it has great utility for a whole bunch of other things in the future. But you decided to go after a next item up on the list, and it uh, turns out this item is really important. It's called glutathione. Uh, our listeners, for the most part, have heard about it. Talk to us a bit about glutathione and how it was that uh, you've done what, what was the methodological extension of what your previous research was, marrying the liposomal system to glutathione. But go ahead. Well, what, we, what, what, what needs to be realized is, as important as vitamin C is, it's very important to maintain <clears throat> as healthy and replete an antioxidant system as possible in your body. 
Uh, all antioxidants donate electrons, which is why they're so useful energy-wise in the body. And they're very compensatory mechanisms. When you're low on one antioxidant, uh, another large enough amount of another antioxidant can largely compensate for that lack. And <clears throat> as important as vitamin C is, it's really what we would call the primary extracellular antioxidant. It's present everywhere inside the body, including inside the cells, but it's most effective outside of the cells because of concentration. When you look inside the cell, in the cytoplasm and in the intracellular space, there's another antioxidant that's several thousand fold more concentrated inside the cell than outside the cell, and that's glutathione. <clears throat> glutathione is a slightly more complex molecule than vitamin C. It's actually what we call a tripeptide, which is three amino acids hooked together. And uh, it, if you will, is the primary defense inside the cell from the cell sustaining substantial amounts of what's called oxidative damage or peroxidation. Really, what happens on a daily basis from moment to moment is, is as the cell does its job, lives, metabolizes, processes foodstuffs, etc., it produces large amounts of free radicals and other things that would steal electrons away from the inside of the cell. And it's the glutathione that keeps that cell healthy. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, the big problem with glutathione is as a supplement, uh, the regular forms of glutathione are just taking glutathione straight, were even far less effective than taking uh, vitamin C straight in terms of absorption and degradation. Most of glutathione, when you take it just straight up orally, is broken down in the stomach by uh, peptidases, peptases, and as a result, it takes an extremely huge amount of oral glutathione to ultimately result in any measurable increases in either intracellular or extracellular glutathione. So what happened is this turned out to be a natural, uh, almost perfect glove and hand use of the liposomal delivery system. It protects the peptide from degradation. It allows it to be delivered inside the cell. And in fact, <clears throat> the liposomal forms of glutathione, in my own clinical experience, have been even substantially more effective clinically, milligram for milligram, in infectious diseases and toxic situations than the lipo C has. So they're great together. You get a delivery of vitamin C not only inside the cell, but you get the glutathione inside the cell when you take these liposomal forms. But truly, uh, only a few packets, only a few grams I found to have very profound effects on a substantial variety of infectious diseases now. So it's nice to have something like this in your medicine cabinet, if you will, because uh, it can prevent, in my opinion, uh, lots of trips to the emergency room and the doctor if you use them quick enough. That is a fascinating new area. This thing with glutathione, um, we always, we, we just knew you couldn't take it by mouth because, you know, being amino acids and having the, these, uh, these proteins disturbed by the stomach acids just didn't make any sense. So IV forms were the only forms that ever could be used, but your liposomal delivery system sort of conquers all the ills, and then that last hurdle, getting the thing actually in the cell turns out to be better enhanced with the liposomal oral forms than the IV forms. That is a phenomenal new use, and um, in combination, as you say, um, vitamin C being a major extracellular antioxidant, now combined with glutathione, the major intracellular is the oxygen. You've got quite a one-two wall up there, don't you, Doc? Oh, uh, no question about it. No question about it. You know, it's interesting too, what you mentioned about intravenous glutathione, is this is a perfect example of how an oral liposome delivered product 
can have so much more profound impact than one intravenously. Uh, when you give intravenous glutathione, which is certainly a good treatment for a lot of conditions, but when you give glutathione intravenously, within a minute, the enzymes in the blood break down the glutathione to their three amino acids. So after a minute, you no longer have intact glutathione circulating in the blood. And then what happens is you need three separate energy requiring and consuming transport mechanisms to get those amino acids inside the cell. And you need two ATP dependent or ATP consuming enzymes inside the cell to resynthesize and connect the amino acids into glutathione. So when you take glutathione intravenously, amazingly enough, you have to consume energy five separate times to have one intact glutathione molecule inside the cell. And this is why uh, even more so than the vitamin C, the liposome encapsulated glutathione is, in my clinical evaluation, profoundly more impactful than, the, than glutathione given intravenously. Because, uh, as I'm learning, I'm a slow learner, but I'm catching on, there's no energy consumption at all with this liposome delivery system. Doesn't require any ATPs anywhere. Am I right? That's correct. And that's one of the primary reasons uh, you consume vitamin C and glutathione in the cell is to regenerate ATP from the spent ADP. So, again, the old robbing Peter to pay Paul. If you can get something that supplies energy into a designated area without consuming energy in the process, you're all the much better off for it. Powerful. One, two, wallop. Give us an idea here of the uh, the dosage. Just, okay, let's just take someone who's not having a current health problem, maybe that wants to take a regime. Should they take a regime of this every day? And if so, what kind of dosing would you recommend? And then if the uh, if if disease befalls any one of us, how should you step that up in your clinical experience? You probably have some recommendations. Well, <clears throat> when people ask about maintenance doses, there's, there's no one magic dose because how much antioxidants you take depends directly on how much toxicity is residing inside your body because toxins are prooxidant and they consume antioxidants. So one dose of vitamin C and glutathione for one person might be very satisfactory and for somebody else who has a large amount of, say, let's say dental toxicity with root canals, that same dose of antioxidants could be inconsequential for them. So in terms of maintenance dose, that varies highly. In terms of when you have a particular disease process or you're catching a cold or you already have the flu, uh, it's really very empirical. You, just like Dr. Klenner did with his IVs, where he would give 20, 30, 40, 50 grams intravenously, and then he would look at the clinical response. Is the patient getting better? Are they breathing easier? Is the fever coming down? Uh, are they feeling better? Just general clinical evaluation. So while somebody doesn't have to practice medicine, certainly everybody knows when they feel better. So if you're having a particular condition or you're developing a cold or, or you're in the flu, you take a certain amount and see if you feel better. If you don't, generally you should take more and take it closer together. And then as you respond, you can take less and take it further apart. But as, they, as the old expression goes, it's not rocket science. You, you take what you need. Interesting. Do these two products are in combination already? Are there individual products? And you take them and mix them as you wish. Yes, no, they're 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 uh, packaged individually, <clears throat> and it's perfectly fine to take them together in the same glass of water or juice or whatever you would use uh, during the day. Uh, there's there's no negative interaction that we know of, uh, but they come in separate packets, and you certainly can take just the vitamin C or just the glutathione if you wish. And you usually take them in juice and um, what's the packet, the equivalency, one packet of vitamin C, what, contains a 
500 milligrams, 200 milligrams, what's a packet? One packet of the C contains one gram of the vitamin C. One gram. One packet of the glutathione contains roughly 500 milligrams of the glutathione. Very good. And uh, like you say, maybe uh, the, the daily dosing better be adjusted to what you need. You really don't have a recommendation for any maintenance level because that's based on their toxicity loads, as you, as you already brought to my attention. Well, well let me say this. Uh, for people that know anything about me, that I've, I've written the books on dental toxicity. Oh, yes, you have. If you have had what we call a total dental revision, you've had root canals properly removed, uh, you've had your periodontal disease resolved, you have any other infected teeth and uh, uh, addressed and either uh, cured or extracted depending on the degree of infection and no mercury fillings and no other toxic metals so if overall your mouth is what we say on the relatively clean side most people will do quite well on uh, one to two packets of either one a day now when you add a substantial amount of dental toxicity then then the dose that you need to deal with your dental toxicity on a daily basis and still leave over enough antioxidant capacity to deal with the daily oxidative stress of day-to-day -day life, that's your maintenance dose. So it can be as low as one packet of each, or it can be as high as uh, five or more packets of each, depending. Good parameters. I'll tell you what, uh, we are we're coming close to the end. Uh, I will say that I'm going to beg of you to, to allow me to communicate with you to bring you back because this topic is now, in my opinion, is way too important just to think we're going to brush over this on one interview with you. So uh, and I'm going to beg on air. Will you come back sometime in the near future, Doctor? Sure, anytime, Dr. Courtney. Okay. We got what's going, what we call bongos in the background, Dr. Levy, which means it is our time on out of here, unfortunately. But uh, thanks for uh, uh, verifying you will come back. And listeners, I promise to bring him back. Uh, we'll be talking more about this subject of the liposomal delivery system with this gentleman, a true icon in medicine. And until then, this is Dr. Dennis Courtney with Dr. Thomas Levy saying so long for AM Impact on Your Health. Dennis J. Courtney.